I thought we'd start out with a couple of questions today. You know, you know I like to do that. Um, it's going to kind of bring you back, maybe some of you, to your high school days. These are, these are questions that you encountered. Um, and the first question is this. What is Newton's first law of motion? Any takers? Remember that? Uh, it simply states that an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stay in motion at the same speed and direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Things stay as they are till something messes with them. Okay? Got that? And the second question is, what's a catalyst? You remember learning about catalysts? Might have been in, in, in science or chemistry or it might have been in a different context. Um, basically, you can see a catalyst in either kind of the chemical sense, right? Uh, it's a substance that enables a chemical reaction to proceed at a, at a usually faster rate or under different condi conditions, maybe at a lower temperature, you know, than otherwise would be possible. Uh, the hardener in two-part epoxy, that's the catalyst that gets things going so that the, the epoxy can harden. Or a catalyst can also be seen as an agent that provokes or speeds significant change or action. So a catalyst can be seen as something that expedites change. All righty then. That's a nice little trip down memory lane. Or maybe not so nice for some of us who did not like such things as science in chemistry. Um, but what do these things have to do with us today, right? It's Pentecost Sunday. It's that, that day in our Christian year that we celebrate the birth of the church. Uh, we celebrate the gift of God's Holy Spirit being poured out upon all people. And this is a new thing. You gotta remember that up until Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit was kind of a situational gift of, of finite dinner, you know, duration. People didn't receive it and it just stayed with them forever. The Holy Spirit came upon them to aid them through something and then it left. But then, almost 2,000 years ago, there was a group of, of rather, rather timid and frightened disciples hiding away in an upper room and they experienced something, something amazing, something that we still don't know exactly what it was, as close as Luke can come is to tell us what it seemed like, right? Um, suddenly a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind. Didn't say it was a wind, but it was just something that made that kind of sound, okay? And then they saw what seemed to be, didn't say they were actually flames, but that's the closest we could come to describe it. Uh, they saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. Something happened on that day long ago. You see, up until that point in time, following the ascension of Jesus, his followers were basically those objects at rest, right, that I talked about in, in Newton's first law of motion, um, they weren't going anywhere. They were just kind of there. Um, neither were they likely to go anywhere, all on their own. They needed that unbalanced force to act upon them, to get them going. Right? To get them fired up. Just like a catalyst can cause a chemical reaction to take place at a lower temperature, okay? God knew what we needed, and so he supplied what we needed. And in this awesome display that we still can't fully understand or, or, or adequately describe, God does this. He gives them all his Holy Spirit, and it, and it made a change, an immense change in those disciples' lives. No longer were they afraid to even go outdoors or, or be seen. They got up from their hiding place and they, they went out into the street and they started proclaiming the great good news of salvation through faith in Christ in such a fashion that nobody got left out. Everybody could hear it. 
It's an amazing thing. So it's good that we celebrate that Pentecost story and what it tells us every year. It is, uh, because this, this world in which we live in, it's busy, it's complex, times it's frightening, and sometimes it induces us to just kind of shrink back and kind of hide out in the comfort of our day-to-day -day routines. I'm just gonna do my job. Not gonna look up, I'm just gonna do my job, right? We don't always have that, that internal strength, that drive to get us moving in the, in the direction that God wants us to move, um, to get us to employ those gifts that God has, has surely and deliberately given each one of us. But God, our amazing, grace-filled, loving, almighty God knows us, and God knows what we need. So he, God uses this Pentecost story and other stories in our Bible to remind us of that catalyst that he has already given us to enable us to do those things that we couldn't do on our own. But with God's help, we can go out and do those things. We can reach beyond our, 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 our fears and do those things that we wouldn't have been able to do all on our own. That's what got me up here, folks. I didn't do this on my own. God helped me here. He helps me today. Remember that. God's not done yet. He didn't pour out the Holy Spirit 2,000 years ago we'll go and say, oh, did my part. Done now. No, he's still at work with us. He's still ready to do things with us. He still wants to do things with us. And we celebrate that today, that reality. And in just a few moments, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. And I, and I love that we get to do this on Pentecost Sunday. Because as you come forward and, and you, re, you, know, you receive the juice and, and the bread, um, those physical elements that remind us not only of what God has already done for us, they also remind us of what God is willing to do for us and with us. So think about that. And as you, as you take those elements into your body, as you dip your little chunk of bread into the juice, and as you eat that, and you take that in, let that, that physical act be a reminder of the gift that God has already placed within you. And that is his Holy Spirit. Because each of you, every single one of you, all who believe have already received God's divine catalyst, the Holy Spirit, that will comfort you, that will encourage you, that will guide you, strengthen you, inspire you, and at times even nag you to go out and do those things that God wants you to do. May each of you, may all of you, go forth from this time of worship with a renewed and an enhanced determination to love your neighbors, just like you want to be loved yourself. May each of you go forth with a renewed determination to, in your own way, share the good news that God really does love everybody that much, that it's already gone to immense lengths to save all of us, even when we're not perfect yet. May the Holy Spirit inspire you to share that news with your neighbors. May it move you from being an object at rest to a servant in motion. Praise be to God. Amen. Yeah.